Welcome back to another rig review. And today I'm going to take a look at the Dude. This is the Dude rig. The Dude rig is in constant development and has constant changes and edits. So for that, there is a Google Drive link, which I will have in the description where you have constant access to the rig. And once you download it, you have a couple of folders, the maps and the Maya version. There is also a picker for it. Make sure to relink all the maps for the textures. And when you have the Maya version, you have multiple versions. There's a beta version eight, nine and 10. Currently in my folder in there, you have the high res, the faceless version and so on. So you have a different option to load. And as always, I will list this on my animation buffet site where I list all kinds of rigs that I find or that people send me or reviews that I make. So if you have anything that you want me to look at, post a review, feel free to email me and I will check out that rig. And speaking of reviews, they will be posted on my YouTube channel. Feel free to browse around and you will see all kinds of things like acting analysis clips, animation analysis clips, lectures, all kinds of things. So browse around. If this is something that you like, feel free to subscribe. All right, going back, this is the dude rig. And in the channels, you can see here, there's the geo and then there's box mode in terms of display. And if I bring in my controllers here, now when you animate this, you can see that's that. So that's much faster to animate. Oh, well, let's go back because I want to see what is going on. This is the rig in all of its glory and all of the controllers. And as always, let me start at the main controllers. So you got one big one here. That's the root master. So you can do the mesh high and low. This is obviously high. This is low. You see the difference there. Still very, very similar. So in terms of the representation in your scene, that's very cool. I like that. You can obviously move that character around using that controller. If I select the one in the middle here, you have another controller. As always, I use stuff like that in case I want that character to fly around. You can change the pivot and now you have a pivot point here or whatever you want to do with that. No other controls here in terms of the channels. That is it. Using the main controller, you can scale. And as always with scale, sometimes it's tricky. This seems to be pretty OK. Make sure that you check it out on really big and small values. The second controller here has only one channel open for scale. So again, see what you can use and what works for you. Scaling and moving the uh, character off the origin, rotating around and scaling sometimes reveals some problems. Certain controllers scale differently, but so far these seems pretty cool and stable. All right, let's go down to the feet. Also, since we get close, really nice textures on the uh, clothing here. Well, let's go to the feet. Let's check out that big box here. Let's grab the foot controller as always. Let's check things out as I move this up. Oh, you can see some intersections with the clothing. That is something to look at in terms of the general look as you move things around. Speaking of moving around, let's go back. This is the foot. I can move this around like that. You have controls here, which I'm gonna go back to, but I usually rotate the foot around to see if the knee goes with it. In this case, it does not. So you have your knee control here. This is for your space, for hip, and feet. Speaking of feet, let's bring that foot back. And if you go into here, you got a foot roll, classic foot roll here. You got the toe rotate like this, banking like that, tip rotate like this. And again, you can see some intersections with the geometry here. And you have the heel rotate like that. If you go back to this, this is your IK FK switch. So IK now, bam, FK. And of course, FK will change to these classic controllers that we all know. You also have stretchability. So if I take this and go like that, nothing happens, but then you can stretch it and this happens. You have secondary controllers on and you have knee on and volume change to <laughs> it goes really small. That's kind of cool. Let's go back here. And if I go back to this and I say knee visibility on here, you have this control to move this around. This is for the pin. And as you go like this, you have changes in the curvature. That's cool. I like that. It also has that box here to change that section like that. Same thing with this. You can pull this to change the curvature or just pull this to do all kinds of things with it. And in the channels, like I said, the curve and the pinning channels. Very cool. And since it's there, let's also move this. You can see these are your bend bows, but again, a bit tricky with the pants. So what you can do is just, this is your pant geometry. You can see this here. So if you select what's underneath, these are the legs. You can just take that leg and hide it. So by doing that, if I move this around here, you can see that all your intersections are gone. Going back into more detail here, you have this controller that you can rotate. This is going to be for your foot roll. If you're doing it like that. And then of course you have a controller here to do this like that, where you have more pivots 
and options. Then you have this middle controller here where you can do tool control like that. So lots of manual options. Of course, these feet, that means left and right is the same thing. And let's go up. As with pretty much every rig here, you have that side control here to move things around. Again, this is to reshape and you can not scale and you can't rotate. This is purely translate. The bigger controller here is your offset dude waste offset control, as it says here. But this kind of functions as a root control. Then you go one up here. This is the actual waste control. They call it waste here. So you have that and you bring it down. Again, this gives you with the offset another version here to pivot it from here, which is very cool. Going one up here, that gives you that chest control. If you go one up higher again, that's this chest control. And then one up here, that's another chest control here. Can't scale and you can't translate. This is just rotation. Now, if you're wondering with this being a root control and an offset control, where is the hip? There's no hip control. I think the hip control should be there just by default. But if you select that blue one, you can see here, you have stretchability, volume, FK visibility, and you have IK visibility. There you go. You also have reverse FK. You can see this here, which is very cool. And if you go back here, now you have that extra box and that extra box is going to be your hip control like this. And if you go up here, that is your chest control where you can translate and rotate. That's all very cool. No scale on this one. So just as a reminder, always check your channels. You have all that in here. Reverse, turn this off. It's your IK visibility and FK visibility on off volume and stretch. Let's go up here. You got these controllers here, which are your clavicles. So clavicle control here. And if I select that arm, this is all separate. And if you select that top controller, you have translates to move it like this. this is also very cool. Just in case you don't do rotations, you can quickly adjust some things, but it takes that rotation of the arm with it like that. If you select this smaller controller here, this is a deformation. That's pretty cool. You don't always have that. And in the channels, you have the up multiplier, side multiplier, out multiplier, and rotation multiplier for all of your influence needs. So if I rotate this up here and on top of that, translate this, it's still fairly clean, but it still has that rotation in there. Kind of interesting to have that more independently, but I wonder if that is with an IK control. Well, let's go down. This is your FK arm like that, the classics like this. This is locked to one rotation. You can probably find the channels and break it, but that's that. This here is your dude biceps control. So you can rotate this like as such. You have extra control this here. This is your, again, bicep shaper with all kinds of options in the channel. And the same thing here, this is for the elbow. This is your elbow out shaper. You can see this here, you can grab these. These are all separate ones. So if you do this, you can see these are the shapes on that arm. It's kind of neat. That is your rotation for your wrist. And since that is being highlighted here, you can change to IK. So now I select this, you have that. There's no auto clavicle. There's no auto clavicle in the channel. Also, this is a full IK with the wrist following the IK control. And I always wish there was a uh, controller that would change this. Yes, you have options here, head, chest, waist and a world for world space but i wish there was a change in the wrist so that if i move this around the wrist will be aligned with the forearm and not that many rigs have that the majority don't so this is not a this is more for me a wish list this is not really a criticism but as you go back here you have the fist scale you can do this here you have the up twist on that you get the low twist on this stretchability so if i take this and stretch that arm here you have your stretchability like this. And of course, volume, it's all very cool. On here, you have secondary controllers. As we know, they are the Benbos to do all of this. Turn these off, you have the elbow visibility. Same thing here, so you can grab this around and pin it, turn this off. You have muscle visibility on off. So these are the extra controllers for the muscles. And last but not least, you have the pick visibility. Now, there is no README. And to be honest, I check things out and I don't know what that is. You can transit this around, you can rotate this around, and when you move this, it goes with it. But to be honest, again, I don't know. If anybody has used this rig and knows what that is, I should know since I'm doing an overview, but I have not figured out yet what that does. Going here, you got your finger controls. This is moving everything, is the master control, which you can scale the control, but not scale the fingers. 
Now this has obviously the separate controls for the fingers. Same thing for the fingers, of course, you can select all of these three and you have rotations like that, or you select the top. This is your master control for quick blocking. Very neat, I like that. This of course are arms, so this will be on both sides the same thing. Then let's go up here. You have controllers that are slightly the same color here. Check this out, and that is the neck control like this. Now this has stretchability, volume, or in the local world to change here and then neck visibility you can turn this on and you have more so as you go in here you can see it will do that you can select this and it will do it from here and you select this and we'll rotate from here you also have this controller here which is the build controller to reshape things you have a top controller that has the pivot up there and you can also translate like that it won't stretch it out and up here you have the flexi so if you do this this will be your boing 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 this will be your squash and stretch which seems to be top only let me select this here to see what's going on ah this is your chin it's very sensitive in its movement be very careful as you move this there's not that much leeway here and then since we're right here this is also your jaw control now you have lips collision on off so if you take the jaw control and move up you can see how this goes up and if you do lips collision no collision you can see that change here as you do it like that then you turn it on you can see there's a slight change in how that behaves now since we're here we have this wheel here this is the face so you have brow secondary there's a ton of stuff here so as you can go here into a very vast detail of moving things around. You have a browse in between. So you turn this on, you have it like that, and you can move it like this, up like that. And I'm gonna go one by one because there are a ton of details here. Then you have the eye main visibility. You have, turn this off here. You have the eyes in between visibility. You have the FK to change that. So if you don't want the main control, you can move those eyes like this versus A separately like that or the main controller here like that which also has local world space switch so a ton of options here you have the eyes auxiliary visibility you can see this right here so let's get a bit closer and that gives you movements of the socket like this you have this ring in here for the iris here and the pupil it's very cool and you have this also in the channel so if you don't want to use controllers always check the channels you can see the channel has all kinds of options here like eye blink so you do this for the lower blink bias and the auto eyelid closed you have the cheeks you can see here all kinds of options here to move this around flexibility is absolutely insane here you have mouth secondary look at that a ton of options here you have the nose visibility all kinds of things you can do here just for the tip that you can do the whole thing here you can reshape that middle section and this section here you have tongue secondary so you have all the options in the tongue here for your controllers and you have the main visibility bam this does everything that you need to know so you have on the side here you have that to move around you have your main shape for the eyebrows so you have this move here so these are the main controls that you want to use if you want to use blinks like that and again you can see this here you can also have rotations to reshape things and these are your main controllers for the mouth so you're going to have lower lip control like that also with scale you have the main scale in the channels here for your pressing and other needs you have the main mouth control you have separate controls you have here the in-between control for the mouth and you got your corners to move out with a nice deformation so you can go pretty far it's very very nice so you can see a ton a ton of options very very cool and just for that hair you also have the hair options here not selecting all of them but technically you can move this around as well looking in the back there's nothing here you always have to check you never know what's back there the difference here is that this is ik and this is fk just in case you're wondering what this box is this is your pole vector that's that selecting this you will see there's nothing in between that's hidden but a ton a ton of options so if you select this here and i'm going to go and turn everything on you can see the complexity in the facial setup so a lot that you can do with this rig so here's something that i noticed that i thought i was being clever because i only <laughs> had this visible 
When I selected this, go, oh, you can hide this, because then you don't have any intersections in the legs. Dun, dun, dun. This is actually not a separate mesh. So you can see here, this is all one piece. So just watch out. So the section issues, but that would be interesting if you could somehow cut this geometry up to fix this. You can smooth out the geometry. That will have a few less intersection points, but that's definitely something to look out for. Other than that, it's very easy to pose, especially in the face, just for this is a very simple pose here, but just a little, to drag the face around the, and the shapes, it's really neat. I have to say it's, it's nice and fast. It seems very light. This is not a massively pushed pose, so feel free to check it out on your own as well to see how far you can push the pose and the rig until it breaks, but that's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of this. It's fun to have this kind of almost a Schwarzenegger-y character here. Again, this is here with all the controllers on. It's so really neat, and it's, there's already a ton of stuff in there, and since this is an ongoing rig project, I'm very curious what else they're gonna introduce and add and fix, so keep an eye on that. I have, as always, the link in the description with all the download info, and feel free to add something in the comments. If you have any questions, concerns, feel free to add the creators directly. But if there's anything that you want other people to know, something you've figured out, feel free to post that in the comments. And that is that from me. I will say bye-bye until the next 